This week on The Produce Nerd, we're going to take you behind the scenes of a mango growing operation in Southern California, where you can see the harvesting and packing processes. This tour was taken at Wong Farms in Mecca, California, which is deep in the heart of the Coachella Valley in Southern California. And I'm so excited to get to share this because who knew that mangoes could grow in California? And even more so, who knew that mangoes could grow on a larger scale in California to where they could be sold? Um, in this case, they're sold at farmer's markets and local stores and even sold across the country and online in case you're looking for that. So here you'll see that we are just cruising through a mango orchard. These are what mango trees look like. And you probably notice, whoa, like what are all those bags doing on the floor? And those bags are lunch bags. Those are paper lunch bags. They use both white and brown, depending on the variety. And they use them to protect the mangoes from the sun because this is, after all, the middle of the desert in Southern California where the temperatures can reach up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit during the summer. The two main mango cultivars that are grown at this operation are the Valencia Pride Mangoes and the Keep Mangoes. And if you've never tried those before, that's because they are not very common or readily available from uh, Latin American countries that are imported into the U.S. or into other countries. And when they are harvesting those, they have different harvesting indicators as well. With the kit variety, uh, it doesn't change color when it ripens. Uh, so we have to touch uh, the bottom of each fruit to see if it's soft. And once it's soft, then we can pick it. So with the Valencia, we want to check for color. And so way up there, we got those yellow ones. Mango trees can grow very large as they're known to last for up to around 100 years. And these trees, they're about 20, 25 years old and they've been pruned to only reach a certain height, but even so, look at, they're still using picking poles and are needing to do that when harvesting. And what's really interesting about mangoes is that the mango trees are alternate bearing. So that means that one year they'll be super heavy crop and the next year can just be a few pieces of fruit. And amongst this orchard, those mango trees are interspersed. So some years, some trees will be really high producing and other trees won't and vice versa the next year. So here, another really cool thing about this operation is that it is a super family farm. And here you will see the dad, the mom is packing and the son we already saw, and he is also helping harvest as well. Since they are located in the desert, they have to be really careful with their water because they have to know, and not only is it really hot there, but the soil is super sandy. It's like it's a, you're at the beach. So they're dealing with super sandy soil, super hot temperatures, and they need to figure out how to best provide water to the trees. So here they are providing water to the trees using drip irrigation. And they are also using a micro trip that they have implanted into the tree. And that will tell them the water pressure in the tree and essentially lets them know once the tree's thirsty and they know that it's time to give it water. And if you're wondering what happens to the bags after the fruit is harvested, they're either laid on the orchard floor and will be sweeped up and tilled back into the soil since it can be composted at the end of the season, or they are removed while they are being packed into boxes. While they are harvesting using the picking poles, the picking poles place the mangoes into those little sacks that are attached and then the mangoes go into buckets. And those buckets are walked a few steps over to the packing table where the mangoes are packed into boxes. And those boxes, they're backed based off of color or however that certain cultivar is determined its ripeness because those that are more ripe will go straight to the farmer's market and then those that have a little bit more time will either go to wholesalers or online orders that take a few extra days so they will need to be ripened. Once all of the mangoes have been harvested to fulfill the orders for the next couple of days, those mangoes are taken to the nearby cooler where they are kept around 60 degrees Fahrenheit and stored until transport the next day or a few days later.
how cool is this cruising through a mango orchard? But really, how cool is it that there is a mango orchard that grows in Southern California where we can buy or order mangoes from? Anyways, I think this is a great way to show you harvest and packing, but if you stick around, I have an extra little surprise at the end to show you a peek into the nursery at Wong Farms. You can see this one, this guy right here started to flower. That's what they look like. But being this young, what we'll do is we'll wait till they start to set uh, fruit, about BB size, and then we'll cut this whole thing off. And then I'll kick it back into uh, uh, just regular growth. But basically all this back here, Valencia Pride, here, here, and then these are all our new varieties of Golden Lady. These guys here are going to be planted into our field, hopefully this next fall. Flavor-wise and overall sweetness, the Golden Lady is number one. Um, it actually has a little bit more sugar to it. It has a honey, vanilla, maple syrup kind of flavoring, um, where the Valencia Pride has more of that tropical pineapple mango flavor. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more produce related content. And if you are interested in learning more about mangoes, you can click here to download the free table on how to select and store mangoes. Thank you.